Hey everybody, James A. Janice here, and I'm very excited to be announcing a new partnership today with the YouTube channel Crypt TV. In case you didn't know, Crypt TV is a channel devoted to high quality, scary short films and monster series. And when I say high quality, I really mean it. The videos there are pro, they're probably better than like 70% of the stuff I cover on the Kill Count. Crypt TV's goal right now is to build a kind of scary cinematic universe, almost like a marvel for monsters. And to that end, they release three videos a week, every Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday? Holy shit, three videos? Three? Are you insane? Well, actually, I'd better get used to that since this partnership is going to result in an extra weekly dead meat video for the next four weeks. That's a whole nother video you'll get each week in addition to the Friday kill counts and the Monday releases, which lately have been extra kill counts, so, you know, you're welcome. In a minute, I'm about to talk about how awesome Crypt TV is and delve into one of their series, The Look See, but first I'll let you know how this is gonna shake out these next few weeks. Next Sunday, March 18th, I'm doing a live stream marathon of Crypt TV content, and I want you to join me. I'll start at noon my time, Pacific, so that's 3 p.m. Eastern, and I'm just gonna chill on a YouTube stream and watch all the Crypt TV content I can find. And I'd love it if you join me so we can watch stuff together and chat about it. Not only will it be fun, it'll also help serve as some crowdsourced research for me for the next three weeks. Because on those Sundays, March 25th, April 1st, and April 8th, I'll be releasing ranking videos for the Crypt TV stuff we watch. I haven't settled on exactly what things I want to rank, but you know kills will be one of them. Other ideas I have are like coolest twist or scariest monster, but since I haven't set anything in stone yet, you can help me decide if you come to the live stream next Sunday, March 18th. But today's video isn't just pimping out the future, it's also talking about the now, the present, the current, and one of Crypt TV's current and best monster series is The Look See. There have been five episodes released so far, each around three or four minutes long, and they also recently put out a very helpful chronological supercut of all the episodes. Actually, you know what? Let's just do a mini kill count on that 16 minute supercut so you can see how good this stuff is. Heads up, we got some real nice jump scares coming in, and if you like what you see, make sure you click the link in the description, or right up there, to watch The Look See supercut in its entirety. Trust me, it's worth it. A lot of what's amazing here is the sound design that you won't hear during my kill Cow. That being said, let's get to the kills. The supercut begins with the look see himself, a fancy man in red fingerless gloves. We get a kill right off the bat when this kid drops dead in front of the camera. Pretty rough stuff, and he's not the only one. Looks like there have been a dozen other victims, all apparently poisoned to death. Not sure what's going on here, but future episodes will reveal it, I'm sure. The funeral for these kids introduce some characters, like Jenny, the Greta Gerwig looking lady, and her husband Daniel, who's looking over and catching smiles from this other woman, Marlene. On the photo collage there, we see our first victim with a woman, possibly his mother, and it looks like she's also a police officer, cleaning up after the crime Scene. She finds a note on the ground saying if she can't release, it'll come take a piece. Sounds like the slogan of a threatening laxative, but you won't need a laxative after this. Ooh, that's some spooky shit, and that was just a bedsheet ghost. Wait till we get to the stuff that's not a $3 Halloween costume. The cop finds a candlelit staircase and climbs it to find a red fingerless glove at the top. But wait a minute, that's not just a glove, it's a hand in a glove! And those aren't just hands, they're hands on the look-see! Another dude shows up and whisks the cop away to safety, only to get pulled back behind the curtains. The cop hears that guy start laughing, and then it's show time! Giggles McGee laughs his way to the top of the curtains, and keeps on laughing as he makes his way back down before he eventually gets pulled backstage. Hey guy, you dropped your watch. There you go. The police officer gets the hell out of there, because the look-see fancy man is way above her pay grade. We find Laughing Dude in a bathroom stall, leaving some graffito on the door, guided by the look-see, who then disappears. Laughing Dude leaves the bathroom, and in runs Jenny, looking all a frantic. Inside the stall, she reads the message Laughing Man left, and it's the same as the note. If you cannot release, then it will come take a piece. Apparently, the thing Jenny needs to release is her ring, which she plays with while thinking about bright, happy memories with her husband. But after hesitating to drop it in the toilet, she finds a pair of shoes peeking in underneath the stall. I don't think that guy's sitting on the toilet. Right. Jenny must be way braver than me, because she gets to peek in over the stall wall to see whose shoes those are. But it's empty over there. That's weird. Are the shoes still? Nope, now the feet are gone too. Maybe double check. Oh, yeah, still empty. Cool, no harm, no foul, I guess. Wait a minute. Ah, fuck, gets me every time. She drops her ring as the look-see pulls her under the stall, trying to drag her out, but she manages to grab the ring and drop it into the loo. Mission accomplished. We should be all good now, right? Except that don't feel like a toilet seat. It feel like a foot. The look-see leans in while laughing and then kills the woman. We only see her feet rise up, but look-see wants you to look-see a body, so they show us the aftermath of it all, and it looks pretty pretzely. Oh, and her hand is missing. Next up is Marlene, who's staring at a picture of Jenny and Daniel, even though the more interesting part of this Polaroid is on the back. Yep, same message. If you can't release, it'll come take a piece. Marlene crops Jenny out of the picture so she can better stare at Daniel, who it seems like she's having an affair with, since she hears something in her house and assumes it must be him. Daniel ain't there, but there's another fancy man available if you're willing to open your heart for him, Marlene. He does have crazy nails, yes, but you could make a spa day of it together. Sounds good, right? As long as he's not too scary? <laughs> Oh shit, too scary, too scary. She hides in the bathroom behind the shower curtain, and when she thinks the coast may be clear, she peeks out to find, hmm, nothing really here. Maybe if you just yank back? Oh, yeah, 
All clear. Guess it's all good. Shit! A scream and a crack signify Marlene's the next on our list. And again, we're shown the violent aftermath when we see her decapitated body. I guess those notes weren't lying. Look, sees always looking to take a piece, y'all. Next up looks like this guy who, oh shit, that's another kill. Okay. That was laughing, dude, and he jumped off a building, killing himself. Crazy. Wait, now we're back with this chick? Oh, fuck. Look, see, you too scary, man. And it also looks, sees like we're gonna have to rescind a kill, because Jenny's in a hospital bed, and yes, indeed, very much alive, even though her hand is missing. And both her legs are broken. That sucks. But still, Still not dead, so I'm retroactively removing her from the kill count, and we're back down to 15. Of course, I knew she wasn't dead going into this, I just didn't want to spoil it for y'all. She sees someone standing in the shadows just outside her hospital room. Shit like this always creeps me out, but I guess it's not that bad when it's revealed to just be Daniel. Oh, what? Visiting his wife in the hospital to see how she's doing? Oh, no, his eyes are missing. That's creepy as fuck. The look-see is there too, and he's got something to say. So listen up, Jenny, because, oh, he just wants to give her the time, I guess. But she doesn't want his watch, and instead she says, look-see, you're done, and sticks a fork in it. Then goes on the offensive, broken legs and all, and almost stabs him in the head before he disappears. She climbs back into bed and takes a look-see at the throat clock left behind, which triggers a memory in her of her husband, Eilis Dan back there, leaving her. Thus, the toilet ring scene. When she's done reminiscing, though, look-see's waiting for her. Next thing we see is a little girl, Camille, in water. And guess what? She did. You can hear some muffled screaming, and we learn that that was probably her dad, this Daniel Stern-looking dude named Jonathan. He's sitting at a table eating birthday cake, all bereaved over his dead daughter. In the photo album he's looking through, he finds a familiar note. If you can't release, it'll come GET SOME! He goes to pick up a crumb and finds his daughter's back to say hello. Hi, sweetheart, what have you been up to? Oh, teleporting, that's fun. He chases after her into a hall closet where he finds the ribbon she was wearing, but that's about it. Another door opens, and when he's looking in that room, he fails to look-see the look-see in the closet behind him. The look-see's not a vacuum, and he ain't gonna stay in that closet. Looksy scares Jonathan back into the kitchen, where he gets rid of the symbolic birthday cake in an attempt to release. But Looksy's still coming. Jonathan hides under the table as some fancy shoes walk around the kitchen and climb on top of the table. And when the ribbon shows up again, you know this dude a goner. Looksy joins him under the table because he forgot to release that last slice of cake. So Jonathan is left as a corpse without arms and a backwards head. Now how's the guy supposed to make another cake like that? Even if he does do the cooking by the book. The supercut ends with Jenny, now in a wheelchair, starting a very impressive and ambitious pen pal project. I'm not gonna do all the numbers graphics and everything, but. 17 people die, genders unknown because of those covered up corpses, chainsaw to Marlene and Mache to Camille. Sound good? I hope this exploration of the look see showed you how good the monsters are on Crypt TV and why I agreed to do a partnership with them. You guys know me, I'm not about to hawk something that's not good. Crypt TV is great, and that's why I'm looking forward to the next few weeks. Again, join me next week on Sunday, March 18th for a live stream hangout marathon of Crypt TV content, then tune in the three Sundays after that for ranking videos of the stuff we watch. It'll be a good time, I promise. I haven't seen a lot of these videos, so you'll probably get to see some legit jump scares from me. That's the plan. And I'll see you then. Be good people.